and welcome to the last part of the CSS uh, videos uh, where we'll try to um, analyze how uh, we can use this uh, language for actually creating and managing page layouts so this is the last part of the video which is the most practical one where we'll try to uh, apply what we learned uh, in studying the language uh, uh, in uh, in creating uh, let's say real uh, real looking let's say pages mm -hmm. Um, first of all, uh, we'll uh, work uh, especially with the box model and to, with positioning attributes of the box model and uh, we see uh, actually three different uh, um, approaches uh, to page layout. So layout means uh, uh, putting the different blocks of the page uh, on the right position, giving a consistent uh, uh, overall structure to the page. We we'll see the traditional way using floats uh, and grids. Uh, we we'll see the new way, so uh, we'll try to overview this part very quickly. We we'll see the new way, which is using a new uh, um, CSS construct called the Flexbox, and we'll uh, go into a bit more detail about how to construct them. And finally, uh, the third part, uh, uh, we'll have a look uh, at a specific library, in particular the Bootstrap library, which is very useful for actually uh, simplifying all the work for us uh, because it already gives us a set of predefined uh, CSS classes uh, that we may use uh, in our projects. Okay, let's start uh, uh, with floats. So you, uh, you remember that uh, in the last video we decide, we analyzed the float uh, attribute, the float property of different blocks uh, and uh, we saw that it's a property that will uh, uh, transform uh, a, uh, a block, uh, usually a block element, uh, in the, that usually should go from top to bottom. So imagine you have several divs, uh, div uh, elements that go uh, are there, uh, that will be laid out from top to bottom by default. Uh, and now we are deciding that the left sidebar uh, will be floated to left, and uh, it will have the float left attributes, and so it will uh, go and occupy the left space of the page. Uh, while the main content will uh, occupy the center page and also we may, we may have a right sidebar that will be floated right so we'll occupy this part of the page and the main contents uh, will be uh, floated left uh, again uh, because it needs to uh, attach to the sidebar and not go below it if uh, it were and not flow around it okay so uh, these are uh, quite basic uh, mechanisms uh, that uh, we can use to transform a linear layout uh, into some more structured layout using these uh, uh, simple methods that can uh, can uh, really quite easily uh, create two or three column layouts uh, in the web pages mm -hmm. so uh, the two column layout of course it's easier we only have a, a left sidebar which will have a, a float left attribute uh, while the main content will not have any specific attributes as you see from the html code uh, usually the sidebar uh, even if visually comes first in the text will come later hmm? and this is uh, useful because we are putting the main content first uh, in the page uh, and so uh, search engines will see the, f the um, main content before the navigational items uh, and also uh, assist assistive technologies for disabled users will uh, focus firstly on main content and only later on this part and um, uh, so uh, this is very easy because the main navigation will be floated left, the main content will be floated right uh, and uh, we uh, may have a, a bit of separation by playing with the margin numbers, the right margin of the, of the main navigation and the left margin of the content so that they don't clash uh, onto each other and if we have a footer we can clear the floats uh, and uh, have the footer after the end of all the floating uh, content. So the structure of the page is very easy. So we'll have uh, one ID with content, uh, another division with the navigation, and a third division with the footer, and we'll just apply a float right to the content, uh, a float left to the navigation, and a clear both to the footer because we want it to be uh, on, on the bottom. And uh, um, of course, we can we may have some spaces uh, uh, around around these boxes. So this is quite. Uh, easy way especially if we are able to specify the the real uh, size uh, uh, in pixels of, of the different uh, um, uh, parts of the window and uh, will <coughs> it will give us a very predictable layout even if it's not scalable at lower resolution nor at high resolution that will be a problem we'll face in a moment 
the three column uh, usually is a, 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 a game in where the main navigation is a left floated element and the content overall is divided into two separate sub contents with floating left and floating right so we are playing with the fact that the float will float a component uh, only inside its container box so we have a content box that will include two other boxes this main content box we will float it left with regards to the content and this float right will be floated right with regards to the, uh, uh, the secondary content will be uh, floated right with regards to this content and um, and so the the main content will float, float right uh, regarding to the page but inside it will uh, will um, include other floating elements so it becomes a bit complex but we can manage with these simple attributes uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of layouts another uh, issue that we need to decide when we're using this kind of uh, floating layouts uh, is the size mm, because uh, uh, here we saw that we are fixed uh, the height of the different uh, uh, parts of the window uh, but in this case we need to assume that we know uh, which are the, the the total number of pixels that we want to, to display so actually the page will be a fixed size and it will be too small on large displays and it will be too large on small displays so there will not be one size for everybody uh, that, for this reason instead of fixed white uh, layouts usually we try to use uh, fluid layouts uh, where the sizes the widths uh, and uh, in some cases also the heights of the different boxes uh, are not given in absolute pixels uh, but rather they are given in a percentage of their container so that we if the window is larger then this uh, uh, block will become larger and will the window will the window is shorter this block will uh, uh, will be more constrained and of course uh, with, with the word wrapping of paragraphs it will be also be become taller and, uh, and narrower but everything will uh, more or less uh, adjust to the uh, size of the window we'll find uh, more uh, so this kind of fluid layouts uh, that the only trick is using percentages instead of absolute number of pixels uh, are able to scale with the size of the window uh, we'll see some more advanced techniques when we talk about uh, uh, responsive layouts uh, there's also another detail, I just want to spend 10 seconds on that, uh, about a mul multi-column layout. So it's also possible inside a box uh, uh, to have the text uh, wrap uh, into different columns uh, in a very easy way. We just uh, have to define how many columns uh, and uh, what's the distance between the spacing between these columns uh, and everything will, will, be, will be formatted uh, automatically. And so uh, we don't need to measure the text to know uh, we don't need to split this text into three divs uh, with the difficulty of knowing where the, when the text is ending here and, and there so the breaks will be computed automatically um, some more advanced layouts are not just based on some floating left and right bar or but on a more general grid structure so actually the page is divided logically uh, in a number of invisible rows and invisible columns uh, and uh, every element uh, will occupy one slot of this grid or some uh, adjacent uh, slots uh, so there may be uh, a cup two slots uh, or two cells uh, in a horizontal way or maybe four cells uh, or two in a vertical way and so on so uh, so that every element uh, will occupy a space which is neatly aligned with the others and a lot of uh, layouts uh, are made in this way uh, the the size of the columns and the size of the rows doesn't need to be equal so we, we find uh, many layouts with uh, uh, short um, some narrower columns and some uh, larger columns depending on the importance of the content achieving this in html is also quite uh, easy uh, there are many ways of doing that uh, and in particular there's an explicit grid element uh, where we can define uh, uh, with the uh, grid uh, columns and grid rows attributes uh, uh, the number of rows and columns in which uh, we want to divide uh, our page so basically a uh, page structure like this can also be implemented uh, as a grid so a three column layout a classical one can also be realized as a three by three um, grid element and uh, uh, so uh, this will uh, the, this kind of layout will be activated by the property display is equal to grid so we are not displaying as a block by using a normal 
uh, block layout algorithm uh, modified by floating uh, but we are using a different type of displays uh, really and uh, that will apply a different algorithm where we de decide that we have uh, three columns uh, of 150 to 100 pixel and uh, uh, everything else in the middle and uh, three rows uh, where also we have 50 pixel 50 pixel and everything else in the middle and everything else also will be scaled according to the content and the different sections uh, the header navigation article and so on are put uh, are forced to believe in a given uh, coordinate row column coordinate so we are putting in with css we are putting a given div inside a given a uh, cell of the table hmm? so it's also very easy to to deploy uh, and to obtain also quite complex uh, um, lay, lay, layouts uh, with grids uh, of course if the content of each cell is as a size which is more or less known in advance and more or less similar to other sizes uh, so these are classical layouts uh, when the designers started to work uh, on more complex layouts they, they they discovered they could use some more power in the layout algorithm and so they invented this flexbox uh, uh, which is an another layout algorithm so uh, we had a classical block 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 layout algorithm we have the new grid and right now we are discussing the flex layout algorithm so the new display property just because the floats basically were invented uh, were uh, thinking about magazines uh, how the magazines are laid out uh, but uh, flexbox was actually invented or uh, say adapted to the to the needs uh, of uh, modern web applications hmm? where we have a complex nesting of horizontal and vertical and a lot of dynamic behavior in these blocks um, actually flex uh, defines a, a container uh, and the contents of this container may have dif different attributes that relate to their alignment uh, to the direction horizontal versus vertical to the order of elements uh, and to the size to the relative size so they can be forced to be of equal size or we can force this one to have uh, twice the size of another and so on so with a uh, very few attributes uh, the flex uh, um, container will do all the work and from the programming point of view it's also very easy because we have one container and some items and so we have a just a, it's a, just a two level uh, definition uh, the container is any box any box usually it will be a block uh, uh, level box and uh, we just declare that this is a container with one attribute display is equal flex and uh, uh, all the direct children of the container are flex items so the flex algorithm will only apply the layout the flex layout algorithm will only apply to the direct immediate children of the container and, uh, and so we are lay the, laying out these kind of boxes and of course these boxes inside may have uh, lower level children but they will not be uh, affected by the, the this layout of decisions hmm? uh, and so we have may have many children and the flex uh, just decides how these children will be positioned within the, the container so the uh, technical is very easy because you, you just have to this uh, to identify the container and put the display equal to flex uh, property on the container so in this case this container will change the layout algorithm and transform it into um, into a um, flexbox uh, uh, display method and then uh, we can you can also add additional attributes that will uh, customize uh, uh, the layout and everything else which is inside this container uh, will uh, uh, have this kind of layout uh, automatically applied to them so we don't need to customize each each one of them because all of them will be automatically dealt by the container hmm? by the algorithm that we declare on the container and so we have all the details about uh, whether we want to uh, add the spacing uh, if we if we don't if we, if we are not filling all the space uh, whether we want the space around or in the middle so there are details but uh, from the historical point of view are important we can also do some grouping for example we have three elements uh, but we want to space them in this way so we can we could mix or join together these two elements uh, just by putting a div around them and so if i have a div around these two items they from the flex point of view they will become one item only because the direct ch children is the div and not and no longer the two blocks 
and so in this case it will apply a layout uh, between item 1 and item 2 then the fact that the item 2 contains two different uh, uh, spans or two different buttons uh, is not relevant to the to the flex algorithm so we can do a very easy grouping by uh, using the div hierarchy by addition uh, by adding a new level of hierarchy we can uh, play with the um, alignment uh, to left to right in the center in the middle and so on for all the different uh, elements for example we are aligning uh, in the center so that these three elements will be centered aligned vertically uh, we can decide whether uh, if we have many elements they will be cut at the border or they can overflow the border or may, uh, most likely they will wrap around into the next line again we just the simplicity is that we are setting the algorithms uh, sorry the properties on the container so we don't need to modify all the specific elements that are inside this container uh, the direction so we may align from left to right or from top to bottom uh, in a row or in a column and uh, uh, we can also decide uh, uh, the, um, the size of these elements so by default uh, uh, the element will have the, the size that depends on the content we may uh, put a flex property that will uh, on the elements themselves on the children that decides uh, um, what is their relative size so for example if all of three these elements have the flex value equal to one they will have the same size and if of them one of them will have the um, value two then it will be twice as large or twice as high or twice as, as tall if we are um, positioning vertically than the others so in this case uh, is the only case where we are put we're starting to put some attributes onto the children because we want them to have a different size uh, so they will be aligned according to the flex uh, instruction of the containers but then uh, we are forcing their, their sizes to be uh, in relation with each other with a two to one uh, ratio in this case so with just this handful of, uh, of properties uh, uh, the most important one is display equal to uh, it, it becomes equal to flex uh, that will uh, transform the uh, will start the layout algorithm, so the flexbox layout algorithm and uh, a, a few others uh, let you control very quickly and very easily uh, the layout structure which is normally common in many websites so when you are having a list of articles or you are having uh, many pictures or many articles or many items and many many cards and so on you can uh, use this and whether you want to something to be out, um, to auto align to wrap around uh, depending on the size of the window this algorithm is doing everything by itself mm -hmm. so uh, right now is the preferred way mm, of, of studying the pages uh, if you want uh, you may have some some more links uh, in this case uh, right now we are uh, designing web pages and tr we are trying to make them look like uh, in, say, in a nice way in a clearly understandable way and so on the issue is that we don't know uh, the size of the window that the users will be using so maybe my user will be watching one my, my website on the smartphone maybe they will be using that on a 4k uh, uh, 29 inches monitor and uh, the same uh, layout will not be optimal for both of them and uh, how can we uh, solve this problem uh, this problem is called the uh, responsive layout problem where uh, we want uh, uh, our layout to be adapted to every display format and size and uh, scaling is not the solution we don't want a, we a website to be compressed very tightly when you when we are viewing that on the smartphone or the same website would to be enlarged with very big letters and big numbers and big icons uh, when we are so seeing that at full resolution on a big screen we want if we have a big screen we want more content to fit if we, if we have a small screen we want some content to be um, omitted to be deleted some content to be shifted down some fonts to be uh, some spacing to be reduced some fonts to be redefined and so on so actually, uh, depending on the size, we want to apply different algorithms where the same blocks uh, may disappear uh, or may be positioned in a different place according to the different sizes. And uh, 
second uh, requirement we don't want to do that by hand we don't want to create 17 or 200 different layouts uh, depending on the type of smartphone on the on the resolution whether you have a tablet whether it's in a portrait on landscape orientation uh, according to the different sizes of uh, laptop monitors and desktop monitors and so on so we would like to give some intelligence to the layout algorithm um, so that it can in a way adapt to the different media uh, according uh, with the starting from the same HTML and more or less the same CSS content and the trick is uh, including into the CSS declaration the so-called media queries media queries are a sort of uh, selectors that will apply only if uh, at the media content so the container the screen has some properties for example uh media minimum white 900 pixel it's a selector it's a css selector of a new type that will match only if uh the the meet the display media so where the uh the the web page will be published on the screen for example uh normally it will be a, uh, some sort of a screen uh, it's uh, at least this wide and so this rule will only apply in that case so we can define CSS rules that only apply on larger screens. Some other CSS rules will only apply to smaller screens and so on. So we can, for example, uh, if we have a large screen, we can float right a sidebar uh, on, a, on a large screen. On the, um, and so we'll have, we'll have the float right uh, attribute to the sidebar uh, with the media query of large screen. While uh, on a small screen, maybe the same uh, sidebar will go below and maybe it will be formatted in a different way uh, or maybe a menu in a, in a large screen will be an horizontal menu while on the, on the smartphone will be a vertical uh, menu with many items one or, or below the other like we are familiar uh, to use with, uh, with smartphones hmm? so uh, we can query the device by asking from some properties some attributes uh, uh like the height and the, and the width of the viewport the viewport is the part of the page uh, the part of the display that is used by the page uh, or the physical size of the device or the orientation or the resolution and so on so we have a list uh, a long list of features that we, we can query and and we know that we can adapt our presentation to the different characteristics of the device so for example the same content may be reorganized also in a quite different way so we have maybe the header becomes larger here because we will have a more impact uh, the content will be the second one but uh, since the screen is is big we can also put some feature content on top because the the user will see the main content uh, in any way uh, while uh, in the smaller uh, screens uh, tablets or mobile uh, we've put the content first uh, and the features and uh, so the advertisements uh, or other content we want to push can become later because otherwise the the, uh, the user will never have the chance to see the content if it will come uh, too low in the screen so we can adapt that by having the same html the same content and different css uh, that will be triggered by different media queries so in some cases a media query will define the fonts here the sizes here this will be larger and will be only apply when the device white or eight will be uh, larger than a given number and so on of course we don't want to have a continuum uh, of, of layouts uh, we will have uh, some sort of a of break points so below a given threshold we use this layout in the middle we use a second layout and over a given resolution we use a third layout and uh, the kind of resolution or size that will trigger this change of layout is called usually a break point so the point in which we are shifting or changing the uh, layout rules uh, and uh, usually at, at some fixed resolutions fixed sizes uh, we uh, we have some four or five different break points at maximum and then we decide what to do at, at each of these uh, points uh, that represent more or less one category of devices the idea the suggestion is uh, first try to design for the smallest uh, uh, viewport that you are that your application want to serve uh, to support uh, and try to fit everything there and then you try to enlarge that of course when you are enlarging this one 
okay it will become boring because all the content will be just stretched horizontally and so we are starting from a given size uh, on uh, it will be useful to put uh, uh, elements in parallel so if you're starting with the features one below the others at a given point you want to put them side by side um, and um, so that they can fill uh, the space more nicely hmm? so this is the basic, uh, basic idea uh, with some examples when uh, we have some minimum device uh, uh, white uh, or maximum device white uh, that will trigger different types uh, of, uh, of styles by the way the same mechanism may also be used to differentiate uh, uh, print uh, uh, versions from uh, um, from uh, um, uh, from display version so when you're printing a page a different set of styles will be applied so you are, you are not wasting ink or you are not wasting space in printing uh, useless uh, uh, devices useless uh, um, content and this can also be applied with the concept of grids and uh, for easing the the positioning of the different blocks uh, into uh, the different uh, breakpoints uh, usually uh, the designers don't think in pixels so pixels are too slow or are too small and so it's very difficult to be pixel precise uh, uh, designers tend to use in terms of grids uh, and so we we design a grid uh, that is working for a given breakpoint uh, and when the breakpoint increases or decreases so we're, we're ch shifting the layout uh, we are just changing the number of columns that you want to occupy with an element uh, this the combination of these two concepts uh, the um, responsive layout and the grid layout uh, allows us to create uh, the modern uh, let's say content of the website that we are all familiar with and in particular we'll see uh, now a library it's called the bootstrap uh, library which puts together all of this in a very easy to use framework so uh, in a way, uh, it, since uh, most of the design decisions are common to many websites, so the layout is more or less common, uh, so what we want to do is uh, um, to already have some predefined rules uh, that we can customize, of course, uh, uh, that will uh, enable us to very quickly create a normal layout, a normal looking layout, a modern looking layout if you want. So we don't need to uh, decide all the margins, all the borders, uh, all the font sizes and so on because it will be a very tedious and very wor a work for designers. We'll already have some uh, basic design which is already good looking and it will uh, be automatically uh, responsive uh, and grid based. Hmm? So what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is a CSS library. It defines a set of CSS classes and so if we want to apply these classes to our HTML code, then our pages will look uh, according to the Bootstrap styles. Uh, of course, it's not, it's not just Java, uh, CSS because it all, internally it will also use some JavaScript code, but it's not a problem for us. We don't need to see it basically, it's just in an internal um, framework and it applies modern styles and they are this and which these styles are the same across the different browsers, which is also important because our pages will look like the same uh, even we, if we switch browsers or if we switch uh, operating systems and it also takes care of a lot of cross browsers issues because uh, uh, maybe some uh, newest css3 attributes are supported only partially or in a different way by different browsers and bootstrap already has all the compensations to take care of those of those details so it will really uh, be working at a very much sim more simplified and higher level than by with direct uh, CSS. Um, so uh, Bootstrap actually de uh, defines a lot of CSS classes that you can apply to your element and every class can apply one specific, specific effect uh, like the color, the font, the alignment and so on uh, which is a higher level effect with com compared to the individual attributes uh, and these classes may be combined in the same elements if you want to uh, add the different elements one on top of the other um, and uh, additionally it doesn't give you just the effects to apply to uh, your elements it, we, it will provide you also some components uh, which are uh, already uh, complex uh, uh, let's say parts of the page uh, like a menu like a set of buttons and so on that are already designed to work together so you don't have to construct your menu 
uh, voice by voice, item by item, but you already have a menu uh, structure that will transform automatically a whole a number list into a, a nice looking menu and so on. And it will be responsive and compatible with model, mobile devices. So it's, good, it's a good choice. It's not the only one. There are many frameworks around that more or less use the same uh, approach we are using Booster because more or less uh, is the most popular one. Hmm. Um, how to use Bootstrap in your pages? Well, of course, you have to load the CSS and the JavaScript that compose Bootstrap itself in your page. Uh, the CSS will be loaded in the heading part of the document and the JavaScript will be loaded at the end of the body. Uh, why at the end? Because uh, uh, when we load the JavaScript, at, at least the body of the document is already loaded, so our JavaScript will be able to start uh, uh, transforming it. Okay. Uh, some of this JavaScript will be directly supporting Bootstrap and some other libraries will be supporting additional components that we may use. But uh, uh, it's, um, it's quite easy because uh, Bootstrap already offers as a CDN, a content distribution network, where these files are already published there. So we don't even need to download them, we just have to include them in our page. Or if we want, we can download the, all, everything locally and uh, uh, unpack that in our web page and re um, the link to the local files or even using the bootstrap package from node.js that will download the packages for us and put them into our project the easiest way is using the bootstrap uh, cdn where you see that in our head of the document we put this statement uh, link uh, this style sheet leaving at this bootstrap cdn uh, address and uh, uh, at the end of the body we put these three script statements uh, that will uh, uh, load uh, um, this jquery this popper and this bootstrap uh, javascript libraries the strange number that you see here uh, as the integrity is actually the hash code of the of the um, of the file that will uh, ensure the browser that uh, there's no man in the middle there's nobody uh, who are uh, intercepting and changing the content of the file that we are downloading. Hmm. Uh, the next uh, step, uh, so at this point, uh, would be to uh, create uh, uh, an empty page. So I will start maybe with an example. I try to to create, uh, uh, let's say, let's remember the, the, the type of exercise that we are doing with the uh, exams and scores for the exams. Uh, and uh, I try to create a very simple HTML page without Bootstrap for the moment uh, that contains a table with all the exam scores. So I try to apply the semantic HTML where there's a header section, there's a main section. The main section contains a table with a heading, a body. The body of the table contains some scores of the exams and a caption. No? A very simple. And the uh, visual layout of this page is uh, like this. This is pure HTML without any uh, any bootstrap uh, code. Hmm? So in this case, is the, we have the re default rendering of H1, the default rendering of the ca table caption, the table headings that are bold and centered. I didn't uh, apply any style sheets to that. So we could at this point uh, try to start playing with the style sheets and start uh, applying borders, uh, colors, uh, alignments, and so on to make this page look better. Uh? Right, uh, right now it's really ugly to see. Okay, it's really uh, you you cannot look at that without uh, um, without appreciating how bad it is. Um, and so we want to transform them using Bootstrap. Uh, the suggestion that they give you is to start uh, with a sort of basic template. There's already a template doc um, HTML code that uh, is listed here that gives you already the skeleton of the file where you just have to fill the body and uh, uh, and uh, all the uh, CSS will be loaded, all the JavaScript will be loaded. Uh, and in particular, there will be a viewport statement, uh, we didn't go into this detail, uh, that will enable the responsivity of the of the device. So basically, it's, it's telling to the, uh, to the browser, don't scale the content. Uh, uh, the browser will not try to shrink the content if the, if the device is smaller because that will be the job for the responsive uh, uh, code in our application. So we are trying to disable the automatic uh, rescaling of the browser because we are dealing with that. 
so we start with this template or if we want to something something more complex we can pick from these examples here and uh, uh, the the key point is that all the page all the content of your page should be inside the div with a class called container and uh, i transform that uh, with uh, uh, bootstrap so i just modified this example by pasting the body into this uh, uh, template bootstrap main template so the all this part is the same it's just taken from the template and the lines at the end are also taken from the template while the body of the document is actually the same as before and i put everything into a, a, a container a, a div uh, that was not uh, there before before i didn't have any div here between the body and the header because uh, uh, bootstrap needs a container to give the margins to the to the content and then i apply some classes let, let, let we'll see them in a second uh, to to our code uh, to apply the bootstrap transformation to the specific uh, uh, elements that we that we want to see and uh, for example the result is this one so we just uh, let's say basically two attributes one attribute here uh, jumbotron that creates this big block in this, in the, right now it's gray and this uh, class table to be applied to the table then everything is uh, laid out in a in this uh, nicer way by the way mm -hmm. and also you see that the caption is uh, in in, uh, in gray and is, and is below the table instead on top of that and so on like like the modern websites um, suggest you so it's very easy because you are not modifying your html if your html is well structured and is, is semantic then you just need to put the right classes to the right elements and all the layout will be transformed into something which is maybe it's not good looking but it's at least better than before and what are these classes uh, well uh, first of all we have the main container we may be a container or container fluid the difference is that uh, um, the container gives you a fixed width of the page and that that white of course depends on the breakpoint while the fluid uh, will always use 100 uh, percent of the browser of the window browser so it's uh, it's scaling so if for example if i'm resizing this window uh, you see that the size of the page of the content will not change uh, until i reach some threshold where you see that the content tuck, will uh, jump to a smaller size and so on will jump so there are jumps uh, con con uh, corresponding to the different breakpoints of the resolutions but between one breakpoint and the next breakpoint the size is fixed if i were to change the container to container fluid and i reload the page the behavior will be different because uh, the content will always occupy 100 percent of the page of course the breakpoint mechanism will still be working uh, but uh, uh, by default we have uh, uh, um, all the possible sizes that will be accounted for so it will be adapted dynamically to the size of the window uh, maybe uh, for responsive layouts we usually tend to prefer the first one but it's not we can choose depending on the application this is the main rule so all the content should be inside a container that will give you the rule for how to respond to the different uh, uh, sizes and then all the content is uh, in internally laid out using a flexbox we don't need to use the flexbox attributes is done internally by bootstrap um, and uh, uh, this uh, flexbox will use a 12 column grid um, and uh, is, when, is, when when we are thinking about a grid we think about different rows and each row can contain many columns and uh, uh, these are not the table rows and columns on the table that i shown in the example there are wrong uh, columns of the layout so in this case we have one big row here that contains the first element and another big row there uh, the second one that contains the application and in this case both rows are uh, using the whole space in the page okay we are the both rows are using 12 columns but uh, we may specify that a given element will only occupy a part of the page uh, so not all the width of the page will be used for, for example uh, okay we have uh, uh, 
in this example here we can have four columns that divide uh, equally the space uh, or uh, one column that will occupy eight spaces uh, and the other only four and so we are dividing the space so for example if i want to put the table side by side with the title i will just say that the title will occupy maybe two columns and or three columns and the table will occupy nine columns so let's say the table the container of the table column nine and the header should uh, only have a column three and so maybe it works so the problem is that this div uh, will the jumbotron is not uh, okay uh, column six so let's make it smaller I know so the problem is h1 which is uh, which is the the, the problem and uh, we have uh, okay uh, another division header okay well uh, i can sorry for the example um i can e uh, use a, a smaller part of the of the of the page so for example i may have, have side side by side with the table we have the main content inside the main content i may have a di another div, div with a different content slash div slash div and uh, i have uh, maybe some explanation discussion about the exams for example and if i load it well it's not working um okay let me i, I will show an, uh, an exercise with the with the, some examples there and uh, it's not working uh, live um so the idea is that we can occupy different columns okay missing row attributes sorry that's why sorry i said uh, a grid is made of rows and columns uh, and, and i forget the rows row and then this div ends there mm, here let's align that so it's uh, three six and three let's see if it works okay so why is this below because probably i, I missed some uh, there's three six and three inside the main um, and uh, okay so we are successfully we are we put the exams uh, side by side with the table we can also make the table larger and uh, nine occupy 90 percent of the table and uh, uh 90 percent of the page and we see it, it becomes larger and so on so it it requires some some study of course some uh, analysis of these properties uh, and uh, you, you, you see all the possibilities uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, at this uh, web page here so uh, let me click on that okay they will give you uh, many examples of three equal size columns you see that they are uh, container row and then different columns uh, or you may have uh, different uh, uh, sizes uh, so if you are dividing a row in three in two columns they each of them will occupy 50 percent if you divide into three each of them will occupy 33 uh, percent uh, or you can use this uh, uh, column six for example identifier column five to, to tell how much uh, space uh, of the 12 available columns uh, you want to occupy and these definitions uh, are not absolute because you may decide that maybe a column will be uh, smaller or larger depending on the breakpoint uh, so that's why we have this table which is also reported in the slides or may maybe it's more readable there all the predefined breakpoints uh, in uh, in uh, in, um, in bootstrap uh, and that uh, uh, all the attributes all the column attributes can be uh, qualified uh, with a small medium large or extra large attributes 
so what you can say is that a given column is uh, um, occupies maybe uh, three columns uh, in an extra large and a six column in small uh, or maybe 12 columns uh, in extra small so it will be one below the others if you pick some examples here you will see this behavior like uh, let me pick one responsive examples here uh, like here so we have uh, one layout where this uh, content will occupy eight columns uh, in the medium size and above or over the medium breakpoint uh, and the right part will occupy six columns in smaller and four columns uh, in uh, uh, medium and above so what it means if we are in the medium or above breakpoints uh, then we will use eight and four so the screen will be divided in two thirds one third hmm? if we are on a smaller screen then this will not apply anymore and also this will not apply anymore and so if we don't have any division so this one will occupy the whole uh, row and this one will occupy only half of it but uh, they cannot be side by side they need to go on a new row hmm? they need to wrap around so if i reduce the screen look at the first line here what happens if i reduce the window at a given point when i reach the, the medium breakpoint okay here at this point uh, so that everything is shifting so it's not uh, easy to follow from here i reduce some pixels and it jumps in this way so i oh, oh i went below the median threshold so this is not applying anymore so this cell will occupy the full white and the second one is column six only will occupy six out of uh, uh, 12 columns the same goes for the second one for example we have uh, over the medium size uh, we have four four and four so divided in three equal parts below the medium this will, this will not apply this will not apply this will not apply so what applies is six six and six and uh, uh, in this case uh, uh, again six and six will be 12 so below the medium these two one will occupy the 12 columns and these uh, six further columns will be on the next row let's see like this in this case it will be six and six uh, and uh, they will uh, still be six uh, because there's no uh, size no, no breakpoint uh, indication and so even if we, if, we, if we shrink it more they will always be side by side hmm? because there's no breakpoint that will change this kind of layout so we are a sort of a fluid layout inside uh, within one breakpoint and the next and uh, changing the layout uh, when we go across uh, a breakpoint number so with a bit familiarity it's uh, quite easy to create uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, responsiveness and uh, um, and and set up the layout you want once we have the big picture okay so once we decided the layout of the page which is the more complex choices that we have to make uh, how it resizes where are the content positioned then we can work on the page content the page content is what goes inside the blocks and basically what bootstrap does for you is to replace the browser default styles into uh, the the, the bootstrap basic styles uh, changing text styles changing all the item uh, headings all the alignments uh, uh, and so on and reformatting the tables uh, and so by giving you the kind of layout that we are uh, now or familiar and uh, you can use uh, uh, many other components uh, many other classes uh, uh, for creating uh, uh, buttons, for creating uh, this jumbotron, for creating alerts, uh, for creating forms, uh, for creating navigation bars, and so on. So you can have a look at this page uh, where you have all the uh, available components that are listed in alphabetical order, and uh, it's very nice for, for example, a success alert, uh, and it's just one div. You just have to put the right classes there. So it's an alert uh, of type danger of type warning of type info and uh, it will format a, a normal div into this kind of, of box uh, or uh, changing the links uh, uh, aspect uh, creating um, a block like 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 that uh, having the dismiss button for an element so it will automatically disappear it's very easy because you just have to, to copy this example and it's an alert 
where an additional type uh, will, uh, in this case, will uh, close the, uh, the div. Hmm? So all of this is already automatic uh, for you, and, uh, and we just have to, to use, uh, and this was that the, the, the alert uh, component. We may have badges uh, like notes, uh, we may create breadcrumbs, uh, like we use in the navigation bars uh, with different formats, uh, uh, buttons are very uh, often used uh, of different sizes and color depending on the primary secondary success uh, the, the color will depend on the role that this button uh, wants to have some buttons may be grouped uh, for creating decision uh, menus uh, or grouped in different ways uh, and and so on we can also for example the, the carousel component that will uh, give you a set of slides uh, and uh, the possibility of switching easily from one slide to another uh, drop down menus uh, that will create this kind of menus and buttons if you imagine imagine of doing that uh, by hand using css of course it's possible uh, in this case we have a div with a position um, absolute uh, that will that by default it's hidden and on the action of this button will be the, the hidden property will be modified to the block property so it will display and we have a uh, hover attribute that will change the background color so nothing new everything that we can do of course with css but right now we just have to uh, to create uh, one div with containing some links uh, and it will be automatically transformed into a button hmm? uh, so that um, that's a very convenient way of working. We will come into more uh, details about uh, Bootstrap when we, de when we deal with forms, uh, which forms have, of course, a very strong uh, interactive components uh, about the submission of the data, about the validation of the data, and so on. So we'll see what the combinations of uh, JavaScript and, uh, and Bootstrap will do uh, when we come to this kind of, uh, uh, of elements. Uh, for example, all the navigational elements, uh, which are the uh, link bars when we have uh, very many uh, elements on the same lines or the navigation bar uh, which is a, a richer uh, version so maybe responsive like we are used we can open and close the bar it can be fixed on the size uh, or can can be just uh, hidden as a title and so on so there are many styles and you can recognize probably by looking at these pages here uh, the aspects of many many websites that you see because this uh, uh, sort of um, of layout is being used by many websites so for example the spinner so everything is ready just to cut and paste and uh, and uh, when you put your content inside uh, all the layouts spacing and issues uh, are already solved for you these are very useful the, the toss are uh, used for just displaying a short message uh, that you can let it go away automatically after a given time or manually when the user dismisses that and so you have all the styles for those so that's what the the component part of bootstrap is as i mentioned is is very rich and you just uh, i suggest you can browse through them just to try to imagine what you can put in your page hmm? the layout part describes all the containers and all the um, all the responsive uh, uh, part, the breakpoints and the column uh, layout, as we discussed, and in particular, we'll describe the, all the grid system that we briefly mentioned uh, with the 12 uh, columns and the content part. Uh, so, the three main menus here are layout, content, and, uh, and, um, and components. The content part. Uh, uh, will tell you about uh, the fonts that you're using so how to change all the fonts and styles uh, uh, headings uh, spacing uh, the underlines and so on and some details about how to deal with images uh, how to make images responsive so changing the image according to the resolution do you want it to scale do you want it to be replaced with another image and all the uh, a lot of work about tables uh, how to format tables uh, this is the default formatting, which is very easy to see and very easy to obtain, but of course you can modify everything, highlighting rows, uh, making rows uh, respond to the mouse, and so on. Uh, and so you may have a, a, very, a lot of examples, and, and the general philosophy is always the same. You have some classes that you apply to the right elements, so you, are, you have a normal HTML with semantic markup, and apply some classes to some specific element in order to obtain uh, 
uh, the kind of effect that you want hmm. and you see that the, uh, that's, there are plenty in this documentation there are plenty of effects uh, that you can use uh, to achieve what you want for example uh, tagging the rows or the single cells uh, in a given uh, so you just tagging the row with a uh, primary secondary and so on success uh, attribute cl class attribute and it will just change uh, uh, and we'll also adapt to whether the, the background is, lar is dark or light and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, it works, uh, uh, all, everything can be found in these three links, uh, layout, overview, uh, sorry, layout, uh, content and components. Uh, and uh, so they are just in the form of classes and can be applied uh, to uh, every element in your page. Uh, we'll try whenever possible just to use Bootstrap to avoid uh, uh, having to solve all neat of detail the issues with CSS that of course there's nothing really difficult with CSS it's just a uh, very simple language but the problem is that uh, with the 200 and more properties getting the right thing will uh, use a lot of time so we want to focus our time not on the fine design details uh, but rather on the general uh, application behavior and that's why we are using a set of predefined styles uh, to uh, to create our application to create our content so the next step uh, will be not just to create html and css pages that is what what actually we are going to do in the lab in the lab number two we are trying to put this uh, all this theory about html and css into context in lab two uh, but then we we'll, we will uh, try to merge uh, what we know about JavaScript and try to put you to put it into use inside the browser so adding some dynamic behavior to our web pages but that's for the next step uh, for today we are closing the, the the lecture on CSS thank you